Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to my cabin down by the creek. So, I um, wanted to make another video talking about narcissism, the, em the epidemic of narcissism, and um, how it might be affecting you and the people around you. So, once again, just to recap, what is narcissism? It's a term that gets thrown around a lot, but ultimately, it kind of describes two different types of personalities. A grandiose narcissist is the one you think of when you think of narcissism. The other one, which is the topic of my discussion, is covert narcissism. What is covert narcissism? And how can you recognize it? How do you cope with it? How can you avoid connecting with and bonding with these people? So, first of all, you need to know I don't believe narcissism is curable. I believe if caught early, it's avoidable. But once it sets in, by the time you get over 30, you are what you are in this regard. Narcissists are people who, covert narcissists are people who really have a lot of bad habits, bad tendencies. They're a negative person in general, but they don't want you to know that. They want to create a mask. Mask wearing is one of the main characteristics of a covert narcissist. They want you to think that they are the most empathetic. They want you to think that they are the most loving, caring, and, uh, and charitable person. They typically, one of the main earmarks is a covert, nar covert narcissist cannot take any kind of criticism without losing it, without becoming obviously and openly irritated by it, and they will become extremely defensive. And they will use every schoolyard tactic and tool, every childish tool to uh, dissuade any accountability away from them and onto other people or circumstances so they don't have to be held accountable for their actions or their shortcomings. Or And they definitely don't want to hear about what they need to work on, right? So if you're the kind of person who wants to get into a relationship and each other edify one another, build each other's character, become better people, become a, in a deeper relationship, develop relationships, uh, skills and tools to get more deeply intimate. You are barking up the wrong tree with a narcissist because that's the opposite of everything they want. They want fairy tale. They don't want the truth, especially if it concerns them. Um, and there's a cyclical pattern that causes people to get stuck in these toxic relationships where they get um, either dumped by somebody and then the person comes back around and vacuums them up and restores the relationship. That's called hoovering. I'm gonna talk about in this video a lot of the terminology, like what is hoovering, what is gaslighting, so forth. Who, what are flying monkeys? So a narcissist has a pattern typically where they come in with a thing called love bombing. That's the first topic we'll talk about is love bombing. What is it like to be love bombed by a narcissist? It's probably the most obvious thing. Uh, a woman I know recently had just uh, lost a fiance to COVID, was very vulnerable, and a man came into her life and stormed in like a stormtrooper. And I warned her, I said, that's what a narcissist does, slow down. But within a month of knowing this person, she had, um, she had, let go of her house, gave 30-day notice, sold everything she owned, got rid of everything she owned, gave most of it to Goodwill, right, and to friends and family, and then basically moved in with this guy after knowing him for only a month. Now, this person themselves has a lot of narcissistic issues, and I would consider a person who is on the verge of, of uh, discovering their true nature, right? They're, they're trying to get better, whatever, but it's kind of late in life. But this person... Um, that, you know, the very fact that this man went, hey, move in with me, that should have been an indicator. Now, <laughs> I recently did this, but it was a very different circumstance. Um, it involved a long distance relationship, and the only way to get to know this person was to bring them into my world, right? So that's a different decision. Uh, but also, when I learned from, and I'll never make that mistake again. But in the case of this woman, this other person I'm talking about, uh, this man just showered her with affection, put her on his life insurance policy, offered to buy her a car, got her into his house, cut her off from her past, her history, her own things, 
made her a guest in his home and then set in with the true nature of who they are. So that phase in the beginning is called love bombing. They idolize you. They tell you all the good things about you. They tell you every wonderful thing about you. They exaggerate even uh, your, your, um, your looks or your talents or your personality or something about, they'll find many, many things. Um, they'll do everything right. All the while, they're presenting themselves as the perfect mate for you. The more they know about you, going in and the or and or the more you tell them about you the more tools they have to create this fake image of the perfect version of the man or woman in your life and they and they present that even though there's no resemblance to who they actually are and that love bombing can be, feel really good uh, especially if it's a woman a beautiful woman love bombing a man you know men don't often get the kind of compliments that women get. Like I, you know, for a woman to tell me I'm so handsome, I'm so manly, uh, you're so, you're so good in bed, you know, you're so, all you Christians just back off. We're talking real stuff here. So if you've never, if you've never committed out, sex outside of marriage, then by all means, throw your darts. I'll just delete them. But if you haven't, you really got no room to talk, right? So everybody's got a past. Everybody's got a history. Take that, put it over here. So they'll tell you how great you are at everything. You know, uh, if you're a woman, they'll tell you what a great cook you are. If you're a mother or a parent, they'll tell you what a great parent you are. They'll just find whatever area of your life that they can puff up and they will make you feel amazing. In the case of, uh, or the, you know, there's one or more parties involved in this has money. They will shower you with gifts. They will buy you things. They will take you places. And it'll happen real fast, real fast. They just can't get there fast enough. And they'll, you'll feel pressured into getting deeper in the relationship than you're ready for. Those, that's a sign you're dealing with a covert narcissist. And um, uh, both narcissists will do that. The grandiose and the covert will do the love bombing thing. And then the next phase is what's called devaluing you. So once they get you into the situation, you're committed, your heart is theirs, they feel like they've got control of the situation and that you have bought it hook, line, and sinker. It just diminishes their desire for you, really. And they start seeing you as, well, no, he's not all that. And they'll never say it, right, until you get into a dis disagreement with them. They'll just pocket it away and it'll start to feel distant. One thing I can say about being in a relationship with a narcissist, the love bombing is so good. You want to think that that's who the person really is. And when the bad phase starts to happen, when the abuse, the narcissistic abuse starts to occur, you'll say to yourself, that's different. That's something else. We can deal with that. That's their problem, their issue. But the good person is who they really are. I'm sorry, that is just not the case. The case is the opposite. That bad person, that mean person, that degrading person, that abusive person, that's who they really are. And the love bombing phase, when they're t being perfect, when they're doing everything right, they're saying everything right, they're being the perfect mate. When they have mined your brain and gotten what makes you tick and they start delivering it to you, it feels real. But trust me, that's the fake part. If I had to say one thing about narcissists, they are fake. They're just giant fakes. And so they fake like they're perfect. They fake like they love you. They fake like they admire you because they're trying to get in, to get you close to them so that, you know, they do all that because they want you to return the favor, really. They want you to tell them how perfect they are, how great they are, how awesome they are. They may even, may even for a while be that to you. But it's fake because the minute you have one bit of constructive criticism, the minute they fold the towels one way and you say, well, it fits better in the cabinet if we fold it this way. It's why I chose that way to fold them. They don't care, right? They don't want to hear it. You're stupid for folding towels that way. Where did you learn to fold towels? How dare you talk to me like that? They'll escalate it. And then by the time you think you might have tried to de-escalate it, they'll come with the personal attacks, right? And this can de devolve even into violence. And this process can take anywhere between three weeks and three months. Depends on the person. From love bombing to degradation, can, can, it's a cyclical thing. Once they've done this to you, most sane people will pull back 
At first, maybe you might take full responsibility and go, that's me, you're right. You're right, I'm the reason things aren't working out. I'm promised to do better, right? It doesn't matter whether you do that or whether um, you overlook it, right? You forgive them for it. Um, when they get to that bottom and you've been crushed, sometimes they'll, that, that's the point where they might cheat on you. That's the point where they might leave you, right? But trust me, they'll come back around. It's called hoovering. What is hoovering? Hoovering is breaking up with somebody. And then whether it's three days, three months, or three years later, you circle back around uh, like an automatic vacuum cleaner and you suck them back in, right? They, they suck you back into the relationship. And so love bombing followed by devaluing and then casting you away, right? Replacing you. That's a process, right? And when they get to the other end, they'll circle back around and start love bombing you again. How many of you have had an ex that you had a bad breakup with? You left thinking, I'm glad I got out of there, but hey, they were, other than that, they were a great person other than this issue. And then later on, they come back around and claim they've changed. They realize what they've you know where they went wrong in the relationship and how you're just the most awesome person ever and they were they were just foolish to let you go and they want you back that's hoovering it can happen the next day after a fight i don't know what happened yesterday i just know you're perfect for me and i'm perfect for you and we should get back together this is just stupid can't we please make up the more you want that person the more you admire them i should say admire the fake image they've created for themselves the more likely you are to fall for this, right? Um, and only through like self-awareness, educating yourself what a narcissist does and being able to recognize the red flags can you avoid this process. Um, breaking up or, uh, with a narcissist and walking away from good for, from them for good, you know, once it's in the while it's in the cyclical phase, they may only. They may only destroy your your uh, reputation to one or two people they know can keep a secret. But once they know you figured them out and the breakup might be for real, then they come at you with a scorched earth destruction of your um, of your reputation. And the thing is, if they do that, they just look like a woman scorned. If they personally do that in a really overt way, like go on your Facebook and just trash you to everyone on your Facebook, it makes them look bad. So the covert narcissist has learned they can get someone else to do it for them. So they tell them part of the story. They tell the this other person, this third person, usually one of their other sources, all the bad things that you did, and they and magnify them, make them seem worse than they are, and they leave out all the things that led up to you losing it too. Because what'll happen when a narcissist goes off on you, you'll either become a victim or you'll defend yourself. And so you're getting meanness right? And so you may not even know why you're getting meanness or understand why they're being mean to you, but you respond by being mean back. Then that narcissist will tell everybody they know about how you acted and leave out how they acted. They'll leave out the, the screaming and yelling and the spitting in your face and the calling you names and the demeaning your masculinity or your femininity or attacking your ability to be a parent or your ability to earn or your lifestyle and your personality. They'll leave out all of that stuff until you snapped and they'll just start there with their story, right? Oh, I don't know what happened. We were just having a discussion and he just snapped and then this is what he did to me. And they'll tell all the things you did. In fact, they'll make them seem worse than they were because they'll be completely out of context. And they'll get this other person so worked up that this other person will come on to your, this person you may not even know, will come on to your social media and attack you and tell all these secrets things that are private that you that this person shouldn't even have told them to begin with but now they're telling telling everyone right making your fight public right and not only that it'll be skewed it's 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 not even close to what really happened and the other person may have good intentions that person is known as a flying monkey it goes back to the Wizard of Oz, how you've got the Wicked Witch, and she didn't do her dirty work. She sent her flying monkeys out to do her dirty work, right? They are an appendage of the evil witch. And so that is the reference of flying monkeys, are people that they employ to do the dirty work for them, 
right? And sometimes this can go to the point where a woman will get a new boyfriend. He'll get so mad about the past boyfriend, he'll go and do something to him or attack him. They don't even know each other. He doesn't even hurt his side of the story. And he'll just, you know, so I'm going to go whoop that dude's butt because what he did to her, you know, without doing any investigation, just taking everything this person says at face value and murders, murders have even been committed in this way where a person will present themselves as a victim even though they were the narcissist and they'll go get a third party and so convince them that their ex is so evil that they'll just go and kill them. It's documented. Look it up. It's, it's kind of almost a regular happening. So if, you, if someone is telling you about their situation and they're making this other person look like a villain, you should take it with a grain of salt. And you definitely should not take any action on it unless you have more concrete information that doesn't just rely on their word. So, narcissists can't take responsibility for themselves. They can't apologize. They present a mask, a false narrative of who they are, and they will do anything to defend it, including destroying you. They'll destroy you if, you think, if they think you can peel off their mask and show them who they really are. And... So the best that you can hope for is to be very observant when going into a new relationship. And I will say this, that when it comes to narcissism, the new culprit, especially of covert narcissism, I think, I think research bears this out. It, it's becoming a female problem. Yes, there are male, there are male covert narcissists. They're, most narcissists in men tend to be the uh, grandiose type, right? The rock star. But uh, there are the sneaky types, the silent narcissists in men, although it's just more prevalent in women to a degree to where I think a lot of men in the MGTOW movement, a lot of men in the, um, you know, um, that are peeling the mask off uh, feminism and feminist ideas and how it ha has affected the family and relationships. Um, I think that uh, those guys probably... Um, would say that narcissism is at an epidemic level amongst females. And they would, rightfully so, I think, attribute feminism and feminist ideology as being part of it. Um, it lends itself to this. I'll give you an example. Trust is earned, yes or no. Trust is earned, yes or no. A narcissist, this is a good question, because a narcissist would say, no, you should just trust me. Trust is a gift. I should just, you should just give me the trust because that's what they want. They want you to trust them because it makes what they do so much easier if they're working from a position of trust, right? And so it, you're not looking for the lies. You're not looking for the ex-boyfriend still hanging around. You're not looking for the affair. You're not looking for uh, the other sources they've got lined up waiting behind the scenes for, so when you and they don't work out, they have someone to bounce to. Um. And so if you trust them and you never look in their phone and you never check their computer and you never dig in their purse and you never hire a private eye and you never uh, go to work and then come home unexpectedly, uh, you never follow up on their story, you never check their alibis if you trust them. So they're going to demand trust right up front. It's one of the earmarks. They're not going to ask for it. They're not going to request it. They're going to assume it, right? But we level-minded, non-narcissistic experience, grown adults understand that trust is earned. Think about the person you trust most in your life. You trust them because you trusted them with little things and they were faithful in the little things. The Bible says a man that is trusted with small things will be entrusted with large things. And he who cannot be trusted with small things cannot be trusted with great things. And so trust is built. It's not a requirement before you can proceed in a relationship. It's something that develops when you go slow over time. So a narcissist wants to skip all that, go straight to the reward. You trust me. If you don't trust me, you have trust issues. This is a feminist mantra. Privacy is another feminist mantra. Oh, I deserve privacy and you're supposed to trust me. Doesn't that make a predator much easier to prey upon his prey? What if the sheep inherently trusted the wolf? No. The sheep trust the shepherd and only over time and only to a certain degree. What's the difference between a sheepdog and a wolf? 
the sheep trusts the sheepdog because he has a proven track record of protection, not predation. So privacy in a relationship and coupled with unshakable instant trust is a recipe for personal destruction. It attracts predators, right? It makes you a victim um, automatically. You're just a victim waiting for a predator to come along. Trust, but verify. Let me say that again. Trust, but verify. I'm going to take for granted that if I meet you on the street, you're telling me the truth, right? But before I give you a job, I'm going to verify your story. I'll give you another example of a narcissist who, who fell prey to being verified. This was a pastor who kind of marketed himself as being a cop turned pastor, a policeman turned pastor, okay? And he would often brag about his accomplishments in law enforcement. And he was given a church in an organization, right? Um, and they never really checked his resume. He was talented. He was intelligent. He walked the walk. He had a couple of references from his most recent thing that seemed to hold up without anybody looking too closely. And they just took him at face value. They gave him trust, right? But one day when he's preaching, in the audience is another preacher who's been at odds with him, who has seen this narcissist mask slip. He knows the guy is a liar. He knows the guy, he's caught him in a couple of minor lies that he can't prove. And while the guy's preaching, the guy's name specifically a police force he used to be on the SWAT team with. You know, in his story, he led the SWAT team. So he says, uh, for instance, uh, just paraphrase, uh, you know, when I was the, uh, well, the head of the, uh, you know, Georgetown SWAT team in this state, whatever it is, these are made up names. I don't know where the guy was supposedly from, Virginia or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, he said, I did this and I did this and I learned this and I learned that. And it's all part of his sermon. But the guy in the audience, the other preacher who's seen the mass slips goes, that's something I can check out. That's something really specific. Let's just see if his story holds up. Because he was being the victim of some narcissistic rage. This other pastor, the one with the police background, was uh, slandering his name and trying to destroy his career because they got crossways over something. So this guy was looking for some handle to get a hold of this guy by and potentially getting kicked out of the organization because he knew he was dirty, right? So after hearing this, he gets on the phone the next day and he calls the Georgetown SWAT or police department and asks them about this guy. Hey, did this guy ever work for you? Did this guy, was he head of your SWAT team and for how long? I'm checking a reference. Well, police usually protect themselves, but they also are very, very aware of people who, uh, you know, impersonate police officers and claim things that aren't true. So the lady on the phone, it was a somewhat small town. And she'd been there for a long time and she said, look, I've been here 15 years and I never met anybody by that name. No one's ever been in my office and I know all the guys on the SWAT team and they've had the same leader for the last 10 years, right? And um, he said, can you confirm that? Ask around, check the record. She goes, I'll do it, but I'm just telling you, I know. I'm the person that knows this stuff and he's, someone's misled you. And so she provides him with a written record that no one by that name ever worked for that department. And then the, the preacher who heard this, who was checking up on this other preacher, he delivers this to the state overseer, uh, the head minister. You might call him the regional bishop in some organizations. But he's the guy over the whole state. And he said, look, he lied about this. What else did he lie about? Well, that particular organization, you are not allowed to be a minister if you'd ever had a divorce, Right? I knew the guy and he'd confessed to me he'd been divorced three times or twice that I knew of. He was on his third wife. Well, so they just did a basic background check on this guy and found out he'd been divorced four times. So he was even lying to the guy he was confessing to, right? This guy, this guy was a liar through and through. He never worked for that SWAT team. When confronted, he said, look, I never said I worked for them. I said I worked with them. The problem is that guy's sermon that he delivered that day where he said he worked for and was the leader of this SWAT team. He said that on videotape. It's online. 
So the overseer went, oh, you said you never said that. And he just pulled up the sermon. They scrolled right to it and they used the guy's own words against him. They busted him. He was busted. He was defrocked and his position removed and his reputation ever more destroyed because he got caught in a lie. Narcissists want to exaggerate who they are and who they were and what they've done. And that's one of the things that makes me credible on this channel and makes, lets you know I'm not a narcissist because I've said things on this channel and people, that's their first reaction because they've ran into so many narcissists is, oh yeah, whatever, not uh-uh, uh-uh. No, you, no, you're not a musician, right? So I just fired up the camera and played for them. End of discussion. Uh, they said, oh, you, you never had, uh, you were never on big stages. You were never a successful musician. So I just rolled 20 years of still photos of me performing on giant stages, right? And music I'd produced. And it gave me credibility in this, on this channel, because I'm not a guy who's lying about my past, right? I am who I am. Do you know everything about me and every personal struggle? No. Some things you don't need to know. They're private, right? This is a public format. But as much as you can know a personality online, you, you know me. And that's part of the problem I've had in the past is, and I've experienced this a few times, not just recently, but a few times, where somebody gets to know so much about me, they can easily manipulate me because I am so open and you can just mind this channel and know who I am for the most part. You might have a few surprises when you come to my house for the first time, but I'm pretty open about letting you know right up front, hey, there's these this part of me you don't necessarily know because, uh, you know, people don't need to know all that, right? But we're going to be friends now, so I'm going to tell you all of the things about me. But what you won't find here is me claiming things that aren't true, me saying things that I never did. If I said I did it, I did it. And I've so many times proven it, right? A lot of people thought I was, was not a professional musician. And then I started gigging again, and I started live streaming from the shows, showing me doing it. So narcissists create this mask. It's, and it can shift. You know, that's why they, they seem like they have many faces. They're one thing to one person and something else to another. They become the perfect mate for whoever they're stalking, right? And they will edit their past or even make up out of whole cloth things from their past to support the false image or the mask that they put forward. And the mask will slip when their irritation with you because they generally hate their victims. They generally despise other people. And so... But they can't let anyone know that. But the mask will slip and they will become very cruel. And you will think that cruelty is an aberration and that the mask is the real them, but you've got it backwards. The love bombing is fake. The admiration they show for you is fake. The love and empathy that they pretend to have for you is just that pretending. It's fake. What is real is they are angry. They hate you. They hate themselves. They are incapable of genuine love. They don't know how to love anyone. Being the child of a narcissist is one of the most painful things. And I'm just going to tell on my mom. I don't care if she's an elderly, you know, what is she now? Coming up on, a, she's 89. She'll be 90. Uh, no, she's, she'll be 89 this year. Very old woman. I'm not going to throw her under the bus completely. But I will tell the truth on her. She never told me, I love you, until I was 40, and I demanded it. I said, if you ever want to see my kids again, if you ever want to, you need to tell me, son, I love you, or I'm just never talking to you again. And finally, she got to where she would say, I love you. But my mother never told me. So that's very, that's very hurtful thing, right, to be a child of a narcissist. Um. Being in a relationship with narcissists is very damaging. If you find yourself in a relationship with a narcissist, you need to draw the line, demand self, demand respect, stop taking their ab abuse, and then extricate yourself in a very calculated and careful way because there's nothing worse than breaking up with a narcissist. We'll talk to you next time on my narcissistic investigations. <laughs> All right, just armchair narcissist uh, analyz, analyz, analyzation going on here. We'll see you next time coming at you from my cabin down by the creek.